Hey guys, welcome to my video about my 3D printed R2D2 project slash experiment. Uh, what you're seeing here is the first print I ever did, which was in September of 2019. Uh, most of this project was printed on a Creality CR10S with PLA Plus. Uh, a lot of the cosmetics were Hatchbox filament. And I also used a 3D printer in this picture that I self-built. It's a Prusa clone. And that was for more or less the cosmetic pieces and some of the smaller pieces. And it was definitely easier having two printers running uh, to save some time. This is uh, three parts of the leg section. This is the leg section with the outer pieces sort of in place. And this is the leg section printed mainly in the color it should be, which I kind of wanted to go for. This is the body uh, part, which has five rings, uh, not counting the skirt. The lower section is six pieces. The next section up is approximately 12 pieces. And then the middle section here has 21 pieces. And then the top above that is roughly another 12 pieces. The dome is pictured here. And that was in six sections of the main part of the dome. Plus two little sections up top, which kind of made the area where the pie plates recess into. You'll see it here. That's one of the sections up top. And this is the next slide should have. This is uh, the other two sections. So once you're starting a project like this, you can't resist the temptation to not stack these pieces to get an idea of just what the scale is going to look like. I should also add that all of these files were available free online from Mr. Badly. If you do a search for Mr. Badly, uh, 3D printed R2D2, you can find the files. It's a, usually a link to his Patreon page, which he is not paying me to say this, but for the work this guy has done for this type of hobby and this project, it's so worth giving him five bucks a month for a year. That's like 60 bucks. I mean, help the guy out. I did, um, and you also get access to some of his other creative uh, projects that he's done, which are smaller versions of R2-D2 and other little droids. So this is uh, the body somewhat together. Um, this is actually the belt drive system from the version 2, which you'll see in some actual video coming up soon. It didn't actually work out for me uh, the way it should and there is a version 3 which I then went to but some of these pictures of the body and the legs uh, the body is actually glued together at this point the lower two sections are the lower two halves I don't believe I glued the upper section could be wrong with that, about that and what I did was I glued the rings together and then actually glued the three main sections together that's a picture of a nylon piece that I attempted to print which I could not get to print um, my attempts with nylon didn't work these are some of the cosmetic pieces that I printed out and this is a front foot half piece which I was able to print on that smaller Prusa clone printer uh, here's the body together from probably the first time all together and uh, the dome itself, mounting that dome and getting it to sit correctly on the body took me approximately f like three nights after work. Here's a little test video of me actually revolving the dome around. That was just trial and error of the Lazy Susan placement and then the dome placement on top of that. These are actually circuit boards that I ordered from uh, <laughs> JCL... Uh, PCB I believe it is and I ordered them in black uh, I ordered 
the LEDs off of eBay and went by a little bit of a of a color guide and put them in place. And that's about 300 LEDs there blinking. And this is all based on the Mark Duino uh, hardware and software, which you'll see uh, right here. Curious Mark is his uh, website. That's the sketch version 1.2. And that's actually the firmware that you load onto the chips that are running this uh, Basically, it does all the integration between the, the servos, the sounds, and what happens on those displays. So, like, for instance, when R2 displays the Leah message, those little two square ports on the left there actually do a different sequence. And uh, it's really amazing the work that has gone into this uh, by other people and has just been put out there for free. Here are some of the uh, other prints that I did on the body. There was really not a good way of mounting the speakers behind the vents, which some guys do, some guys don't. Some guys mount speakers off to the right and left of the body and use larger speakers. I used some, I believe they're three and a half inch speakers, and I custom made a mount for these speakers. And it's a chore, but you have to... (laughs) You have to install the mount in a certain sequence and the speakers in a certain sequence to get everything to, to match up. And this is the actual Mark Duino uh, board, which I ordered and ordered all the pieces, soldered it myself. Um, I love to solder, which is a good thing in this project. Um, and here's a test of the Mark Duino interface that is an app for your phone, obviously, and it goes to the XB on the left side. And then you can do different sequences. It's so customizable. Unfortunately, I didn't go this route. I did like the sequence uh, that it, that it worked in. That's a power distribution board that I came up with myself in the same footprint. Uh, here's the dome going together, which I painted with primer filler initially, and I did not like the way the primer filler came out, so I kind of revisited that later. But getting back to the Mark Duino sequence, you can still trigger a lot of the sounds and the animatronics with the Arduino that's on board, the main Arduino that I'm running my Bluetooth control through. This is obviously the body with some Bondo on it. Um, Wasn't a lot of Bondo. Uh, And here's my first test of it driving. And... uh, I think I had a little commentary here. And you can see I, I kind of have two pieces of the ankles taped together. I did not glue it at this point. So I uh, here's another I test where you can hear the, the, the belt actually slipping. Oops. I might actually, uh, I'm not sure what, oh, uh, the foot's slipping around. Oh, no, you know what that is? That's the, uh, the belt. The belt drive is slipping. So this is just a test run. What's happening, what you hear is the uh, the belt is slipping, which I got to tighten up. But I can't believe he moves pretty quick on success. Yeah, that's the one belt slipping around. But pretty crazy. So this is a mod that one of the guys on online actually came up with it's to make the omni wheels for the center piece the center foot obviously this is a an entire ankle piece printed out in one shot uh, which i wanted to do just for uh, strength this is the body outside being primered and painted 
painted it with bright white and then I did a clear coat afterwards. This was my first time really doing hardcore Bondo. I had done some stuff on a, a motorcycle gas tank years ago, but this was my first like really heavy duty like project with Bondo and painting. And I actually used a palm sander first off on the dome on the body with 60 grit and then work my way up 100 grit and then to 220 you have to be very careful though a lot of the edges will burn and melt if you're not careful uh, so you got to kind of give it you kind of got to get a feel for it and i also uh, was able to do the panel pieces themselves in that same fashion where i would you know sand them down here's another shot of this this is before i had clear coated it this is the black undercoat that I put on the dome itself. And then uh, here's another shot out of order uh, of the blue. But the black undercoat really uh, adds to the effect of the silver car coat that I went. This is, this is Chrysler color that's recommended. And uh, the blue is also a, is a Ford color. And if you know, if you're on the Astromech site, uh, the there's tons of information on what colors to do there is another route that guys go where they paint uh, a purple first and then paint a blue over the top of the of the blue co uh, the blue colors i didn't go that route uh, and in person i mean these are these are a little dark these pictures here but in person it really is amazing uh here's another shot of them all together uh this is the shot of the inside the uh, hinges and they're their way that they're fashioned inside and what i did was initially was to like use double-sided tape to stick everything in place and this is where i noticed that i had to sand down the top of each pie plate piece uh slightly at a 45 so they would clear the dome as it went up this is another test that this is actually with the version three gears in the in the legs uh in the feet and uh, he was whipping around there. But I didn't need the 6S batteries at that point. Here's an actual test of uh, sequence. First time I had it all plugged in, all 10 servos, and was doing a sequence in the head. You, if you look close, you can see they're out of order. Um, that's just a matter of plugging them into the correct output which I was able to fix later. And I think at this point, I'm still using the Mark Duino app through the XB. Here's some more progress on the inside of the dome. Uh, real estate gets taken up very quickly. Uh, that was a little kind of test that I did. I was able to solder a push rod to a screw and use a helicopter ball joint like link and and ball setup for the actual doors and uh, hinges in the dome pieces this is a mark duino hollow projector where i ordered 10 of these i think they're inch and a half half round uh glass pieces which make the hollow projector just look amazing that was a shot uh, with the flashlight from my iPhone. And uh, there's the actual threaded screw piece in between the two springs. And the springs actually make it so... There's a hollow projector actuator from the inside. Kind of yeah. doing a random motion. The springs on the dome pieces, on the pie pieces, actually make it so they kind of snap and... and don't actually you know have to be precise you know there can be a little wiggle room and there you go so there's some of the animation uh with the leah message and uh the hollow projector doing a random movement and there's him screaming so this is kind of first test of everything all together sound uh the pie plate pieces opening up uh the, the dome pieces opening up and the little display which it just it's amazing if you dig 
you know, online. And you really don't have to dig that much. Uh, guys on Astromech are really, you know, eager to help out. And there's probably a local club on Facebook now that, that will help you. And uh, you can find all of this information. And this kind of, kind of project also is like a two steps forward, one step back kind of project. You know, uh, just if you're into tinkering and you like electronics, uh, you like troubleshooting, it's a project where, you know, you, you find something that uh, you come up against and you figure out how to fix it. This is the first venture I ever took uh, where I had him in the back of my Jeep. I have a Jeep Wrangler. The dome was on the passenger side seat. I drove him to my friend Jeff's house and uh, showed him off to him and his wife. And his neighbor actually came running over and was like, I got to see what's going on over here. And <laughs> he was he was thrilled to see an R2-D2, even though he's half built, you know, at his neighbor's house. And uh, he performed really well. Since then, I've found a better way to transport them. I kind of have I have some wheel chocks that locks them down in the back of my Jeep really efficiently. This was the data port display, which was one of the hardest things I had to. And I know it's only blinking lights, but the information on Astromech is very, very scarce. Um, you can find it. I found it. The code actually is to run the other board, which I don't have a door for on the on the other side of his body. They're above those coin slots. And that is for the charging port. And they're also in tandem with this. Uh, it's, it's one Arduino running both sequences. Uh, he's getting there now. He's got, you know, more pieces. The utility arm's in. And uh, here's my the back part the main electronics that's the arduino board on the bottom um to the right of that is the sound board and then just all power distribution and i actually soldered my usb bluetooth pickup to the shield that's actually a picture of the programming ports that i custom made for the markduino uh, in the dome section and two toggle switches that's an idea i got off of uh, astromech uh, where a guy had put a a VU meter in and uh, I thought that was a pretty cool touch here's a look inside the dome not much going on in there right now I'm, at this point I was still working on the utility arms and the other arms that he has the gripper arm so the way this works now is there's a bluetooth connection to the main Arduino on his back and then a signal wire goes out to the dome to the Markduino to say hey there's a sequence here and in the in the same under the same code the same sequence i also programmed out to a palulu board which is it's palulu 12 that's working the utility arms and the body panels so in one shot i'm kind of sending commands in two different directions off of two different serial ports and when you run into i don't, I don't know how many guys are gonna like watch this and actually build one themselves but uh when you run into problems, like I have ran into a problem where when I did this sequence here, you can actually see, if you watch, when I go to close everything up, it reboots. You see the, everything dim, and then it goes back to R2-D2 on the top. What's going on there is too much current draw from the servos, and it rebooted the Markduino setup in the dome. So to get rid of that, I actually had to split the power up for the servos in the body uh, on a different step down trend uh step down board buckboard and there's a successful test there's a half of the arm in in there this is just a test through some of the sequences i programmed the palula board is definitely so much easier if you want to program your own custom sequences and animatronics and here he is going to see my nephew which was right after easter and uh that's it. Thanks for watching. More videos to come, hopefully.